Good morning. Morning. How are you? Good. I um, am reading all of this for the first time, so I'm just not normally nervous about hosting, but I want to make sure I know like what the program is because I wasn't in on that. So it looks like to kick things off, Elizabeth has that I open up and go through housekeeping items like telling people they might want to view on speaker view and to mute until we open up for questions during the Q&A and to raise their hands. Um, but I really want to make sure I know. Well, the one slide. thing I would say, like, I don't know how comfortable I feel. Um, so mute when you're not speaking, but but there's a Q&A portion. I don't feel like people should have to wait till Q&A. If they wanted to, I would like this to be more interactive than that. So okay. I think for me, um, well, I don't know. This is, this is Virginia's um, deal. So does this look right to you or are you seeing like a split screen? I am seeing a split screen. It's just uh, right. I've got the the whole. It it isn't started right. It's not taking the whole. How? What am I trying to say? You have like it, it, what your view would be, not presentation view. Right, and this is something that Elizabeth was having a problem with too but I don't know how she fixed it. So I'm gonna need just a minute. I'm actually, I've got to unplug from my docking station, so it might drop me off. Okay. Let's see. You're still here. Hold on. Yep. Great. Yeah, you're, that's what it's supposed to be. Okay, great. So I don't know, can you just leave it there and so you're ready to Yep. I don't know how to now, I don't I don't know. The one thing that she doesn't have is who's got what which of these slides. Yeah, I don't think she knew that either though. Um <clears throat> I have there they were supposed to be on okay. Go go ahead. Here's what I have. Judy welcomes guests. Yeah, I, I um, have the thing right in front of me. So, okay. Here's so you don't have to read it to me. It, now it's just a... This is my understanding, actually. All of these are yours. Wait, sorry. Okay, you're this, 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 this. I think this is your last slide. I don't think that's me. JD wanted... JD sent an email, I guess, to everybody that said... He thought you should do this slide in five minutes or oh okay great well you know what i'm gonna i'm not gonna speak to it like i'm i'm gonna speak around it because i don't like okay. when people read stuff anyways did you and jd do like a run through of the not, presentation the, the presentation kept getting changed okay okay i so, think I know his slides that he submitted start here, YCBA. Okay. He submitted that and all the rest. So this one and this one were ones we had put together. Like on well, the one that Virginia said was a final. At, if you look at JD's things, guiding principles, participants and partners, that to me. Oh, okay. Right. So he starts on 30. Well, okay. So go ahead. I So we'll do the, the mission. And then this will start him. Yeah, I think so. Okay. So I'm not going to go fast this time. Sorry. You. <laughs> Thank you. You. <laughs> I'm, right. I'm also not familiar with the presentation, so I'm just trying to catch up. You. Okay. Yeah. You. Yeah. You. Last you. And then we go to 
So when well, you're done talking somewhere about somewhere in the middle of that also is supposed to be the video. It says that that's in mine. Which I have I have oh, open on okay. YouTube. All right. I I didn't I didn't see that part and that's my fault. So let me go find nope. the video. It's it's on YouTube. Yeah, I just have and to. And it's the one that's um, three minutes and two seconds or so. I have the link that Elizabeth sent. She sent me a link to the video. I just don't have it pulled up, so. Okay, and uh, something is not right here because Virginia and JD, JD is always on time. They were supposed to be. In... They're in the waiting room. I just didn't think they would want to hear us going through this, right? Uh, yes, they should be here. Please let them. Okay. All right, um, let me, I just got to get this link so everyone's not watching me do this part. Can you hear it? Oh, wait. I want to make sure I got the sound working on this. Share screen, this. And I like to tell them that, uh, you know, great minds. Yeah, that think is the one. And you can hear it? Yep. Great minds think differently. Okay, great. Am I still sharing? No. No. There we go. Okay, so let's let them in. I'm a preparation person, so I'm a little... No, I got yeah. you. Okay, here's Virginia and Barbara. JD is not in the waiting room yet. That's interesting. He's usually very, very on time. Hey, Barbara. Good morning, Virginia. Good morning. No, you're muted, Barbara. Good morning. Got it. <laughs> Got it. Good morning. Yeah. How's everybody? Well, good. let's see. Sick child thing. Yeah, I was going to say, that's awful. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's this is her older one, oddly oh. enough. Um, actually, she just turned Seven, I think. Wow. Yeah, but fever and whatnot. Um, I am curious about JD because he's always on time. Ah, uh, and he hasn't logged in yet. Yeah. Cami, are you going to do the housekeeping that um, Elizabeth was going to do? Encourage people to use Speaker View and. Yes. Here comes JD right now. Okay, great. Okay. Um, the only question, she and I were going through the slides and we were talking about at what point. What is that weird square in the middle of the screen? Yeah. Oh gosh, you can see that. It's my participant square. Okay. Good morning, JD. He may be still trying. You have to approve the recording um, before to let you bring your camera and your audio up. It so says J JD is muted. Yeah. JD, if you can hear us, you're muted. He entered the waiting room again. There we go. That looks better. Okay. 
Hey, JD. You're, you're on mute, so unmute. And Cammy, your square came back up again. Yeah, I'm seeing if I can unmute him. Well, it also seems like his video is not working. Yeah, I, he's got to approve that um, the video, the recording thing, because that's what happened to me when I came in. Yeah. That sign has to pop up first, and he's got to approve that. <clears throat> there he is. Oh, okay, I'm in. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. The recording box did have me thrown in there for a minute. Yeah, that's what it. That's what it was. <laughs> Cammy, do we have um, others in in uh, the queue in terms of the audience? I'm sorry, could you say that again? I was asking if we had people waiting in the queue in terms of the audience. We do not. Okay. I shall be right back. I'm going to change my jacket because I'm cold and I want something <laughs> dressier. I'll be back. <laughs> Virginia, at what point did you want, it, during which slide did you want to use the video? She stepped away for a minute. Oh, Barbara did. Um, I thought we were going to do it pretty early up. Right. And so, so Kimmy was going through slides with me. Am I, I, I was not clear, am I, am I starting the slides, like with the mission statement and, and that few little, or is JD starting the slides? If you look at that timeline, we had you welcoming people. Yeah, um, I, I've got it in front of me. Okay. It just doesn't um, say anything about the slides. Well, I just thought, you know, we don't need to talk to the mission you i know, agree I thought, with you that know, i agree up. with that completely. so as you're welcoming people the idea is that that would be the background you know and then we move through those um and then you know i would say you would probably start to talk a little bit about it's it's been such a challenging year and a half for yeah I, I got the message it's just at what and then i i think that would lead into the video. Okay, so maybe here or no, there's, there's Let's do it before that. Yeah. Okay. Be okay. Yeah. And then I wasn't going to start uh, my slides until the YCBA slide. Okay. <clears throat> so I, I so we're here. Yeah. Judy will do intro while this is up. She'll talk about this slide and then we'll go into the video. Right. Yep. Alrighty. Well, and then Judy will cover this slide and this slide. And, th and they're then all JD... about the other pieces that they saw in the video. Mm -hmm. And then JD, you're up starting here. Uh, no, I start. I would ask Judy to uh, introduce the advisory council or just come all okay. the way through that part of the presentation. And then I just jump in with um, the YCBA slide. Okay. Uh, although my initial comments are going to be just sort of the, my personal background with CBA, and I won't be using the slide at all for that. So you can leave on the advisory council until I shift into uh, uh, 30. Okay. So lots of excitement here today. It is our holiday party this afternoon. Oh, hi. are we yeah. ready to let in guests? Sure. Who do you, who do you have start? queued? Uh, Pat Thrasher, Paul Battaglia, 
Uh, Alan Rashkin was in, but he just disappeared. So let me know when you'd like me to start letting people in. Okay, well, it's nine Alan, o'clock. They Alan, should let them Pat, in. And Paul. Yes, let them in, please. And can we lose that, that square? Yeah. The square won't be there, but when I'm looking, when you got, when you want to know who's in the waiting room, I have to pull the square up. So as soon as I let everyone in, that won't show up anymore. Well, good morning, good gentlemen. Good to see you. Oh, and Suzette, good morning. Good morning. Happy holidays to all. Hey, Stan. I, I was reading your lips. <laughs> I am well. I think Cammy is, do you have everyone on mute? Okay. I think um, we, we have a lot to cover before 10 o'clock, so. Um, we should go ahead and get started. Wonderful. Well, I will uh, gladly welcome everyone this morning to us. We're happy to hopefully be sharing a cup of coffee virtually with you. Um, we do have just a few little housekeeping items. One thing that might help your um, viewing is to view in speaker mode, which you're able to change that um, for yourself on your own settings on the top of the screen. If you go um, to the top there and select speaker view, um, that may be the best way to view um, today's session. And I believe that most of you are on mute. If you're not, perhaps go ahead and click that mute button um, during the time that we're not actively participating in conversation. We will have a Q&A session, um, but Dr. J's intention is certainly um, more discussional. So if you have a question, if you click that um, raise hand button, we'll be on the lookout for that. Um, but certainly if you have your hand raised and we don't see you, please feel free to unmute and ask your question. So I will pass it over to Dr. J. Hey, good morning, everybody. Um, lots of familiar faces this morning, and that's, that's a, a great thing to see. Um, so I think Lots of you are aware of the um, evolution, I think, of, of technology at CBA um, over time. And that's, that's part of what has led us to CERTI. So this morning, we're going to talk a, a little bit about um, who we are, how we got to the point of CERTI, and then... Um, uh, we are very fortunate J.D. Ball is going to uh, speak a bit to um, where it's going. So, uh, and, and this presentation really is focused on the future of education. So, um, I think everyone here is aware of the important mission of CBA um, and, and where we are now in terms of uh, are moving forward education for uh, LD kids. I think it's uh, all over the news these days. Um, the uh, the lack of, of research, right? People are jumping in and, and trying all sorts of things with our, our LD kids, um, but nobody's really tracking it. Nobody's really clear about what um, 
the impact of the um, lots and lots of technology that uh, is being thrown at um, students from all different directions. And, and also the, the level of expertise of the teachers who are, are being asked to put that into place. So CBA has always been focused on LD kids and, and LD kids have always, or, or education of LD kids has always um, involved technology. And that put us out front of the exercise when um, we jumped into the COVID learning environment. So um, that, that uh, gave us really a head start um, in a way that lots of other um, educational environments did not um, have. One of the really fortunate things um, for CBA at the point of COVID is we had just launched into um, our capital campaign. And that campaign um, really uh, is what allowed for us to expand into the technology space. We were, you're going to see this morning some really, really interesting um, things that we were able to implement over that time. Um, and I, I don't want to get ahead of my, uh, the, the drama here. So I'm, I'm going to hold up. Can, can you bring the next slide up, please? I know she's, she's doing lots, lots of duty here. Well, so, um, the VIBE collaborative boards, interactive boards, not your, your basic um, uh, smart board, if you will, turned the um, video environment into a classroom. Um, let's go to the next slide. One of the most interesting um, things that we explored were telepresence robots, a variety of them. Um, a Kubi is actually, you can see a photo of it. The student on the screen is driving the, um, the directionality of the, of the screen. So can literally be interacting in the classroom at that time. And then I think the next slide, um, it led us to uh, looking at the use of those. We also used a multitude of, of learning management systems, which are not mentioned there, but led us to the um, creation of CERTI. So before we jump into that, which um, uh, JD will take further on, we are gonna watch a quick video um, and, and see what that looked like in the implementation phase. All our kids at Chesapeake Bay Academy have some kind of a learning difference. And I, and I like to tell them that, uh, you know, great minds think differently. Great minds think differently. On Friday, March 13th, 2020, at 2.30 p.m., Governor Ralph Northam issued the first stay-at-home order. From that moment, we knew we were going to have to work together as a community to support the great minds of CBA. We were going to have to think differently. Right, I mean, this is an opportunity to shape us. And like many, we struggle to create a workable structure and to establish connections in times of isolation. We worried about how to make virtual learning as meaningful as in-person instruction. How many rabbits should I grow? <laughs> That's a rabbit. Hi, that's a rabbit. How would we support our parents in their new roles teaching from home? How would we offer solutions for our students' learning differences? Think differently. Thanks to the support of our generous donors, our students and faculty incorporated new technologies to engage our students in innovative and creative ways. 
Our Kubi robots, Vibe boards, and Chromebooks allow virtual students the ability to interact with their teachers and classmates and to actively participate in the on-campus class experience from home. Our administrative team maintain open lines of communication with our community. Our parents provided feedback on what worked for their children and what did not. Our faculty share insight into the strengths and opportunities being presented in their new environment. And our students rose to the challenges of virtual learning, never afraid to think differently. Together as a community, CBA was able to pivot, adjust, and innovate. Come fall, through countless hours of planning and preparation, all three divisions of students at CBA return to campus. We implemented daily health screenings, physical distancing, one-way traffic patterns in the hallways, and many other safety protocols to bring our students safely back into the building. The challenges of COVID-19 pushed our community to see what we're made of. CBA was founded on personalized education and individualized instruction. But in times of such uncertainty, our faculty and staff actually learn from our students. We learn to think differently. And while the COVID environment will undoubtedly continue to change our schools, it will not change the commitment of our community to serving the great minds at Chesapeake Bay Academy. So I think what you see there is um, really, uh, really innovative. Um, this is your living room slash yoga shanti slash regional oh office <laughs> slash, and this is the basement slash panic room. <laughs> the finer points of YouTube. Um, that's okay. You know what? I, I think it's really il illustrative of the fact that everyone is sort of finding their way in this virtual environment. And that really is what CERTI was about. We were finding our way. We were utilizing multiple learning management systems. So Canvas was unilateral, but uh, even um, Class Dojo was something that the, the lower school had worked with previously. We are we're using um, a variety of telepresence robots. We actually um, experimented with multiple of them before we decided on Kubi. Um, we looked at um, video conferencing, so Zoom and Teams. And, and what we learned through that was that developmentally, there were different needs. Lower school students, um, needed different things than middle school students, than upper school students. Um, different combinations of learning management. So, upper school didn't want telepresence robots. Middle school thrived on telepresence robots. And lower school really needed hands-on. But the Chromebooks are what were at the uh, sort of the saving grace for lower school when they actually did have to go out. So what all of this led to was um, a, a conversation in the Education and Research Committee at CBA to say, we've looked at all of these things. How do we know? How are we going to establish what truly is meaningful for our students? And um, I was very fortunate to have an amazing group of people around me who eventually became the CERTI Advisory Council. Um, Linda, uh, Dr. Mindy Gumpert, Dr. Taryn Myers, Dr. Mary Roberts, and, and um, obviously uh, at the head was J.D. Ball. Um, I am I'm so appreciative of his partnership and his leadership um, as we move into this, because as much as I love research, um, I am not an expert, but um, 
clearly we have someone with many, many years. I, I don't know how many doctoral research studies you've facilitated over the course of your career, JD, but um, we are so fortunate um, to have you here at CBA. So at this point, I would like to turn it over to you to um, speak to the work of CERTI. Oop, you are muted. Sorry. Uh, thank you very much. And, and thanks to everyone for coming this morning and being interested in this topic. Uh, I'll try not to be uh, the septuagenarian emeritus professor that uh, takes your whole morning. We're going to talk uh, very briefly uh, about CERTI and then um, hopefully have some opportunity for questions and answers. Uh, but first, on, on a personal note, I wanted to share how I came to be at uh, Chesapeake Bay Academy for some 30 years now. I, I was an active duty Air Force psychologist at Andrews Air Force Base when I relocated back to this area. I grew up in Hampton and I came um, to begin a career as a pediatric neuropsychologist of which there were a handful in Virginia and a hundred or so across the country. This was a brand new profession. There were no uh, journals and only a few textbooks. And it was a really exciting time to be in Eastern Virginia Medical School, which was infantile by comparison to where it is now. Uh, and very quickly, I was seeing uh, children with all kinds of neurological problems and sharing them with um, area neurologists, uh, looking for their best learning styles studying them one by one with extensive neuropsychological testing and trying to match them to schools in the area. I gave lots of presentations to try to tell people what this new field was and how it might help. And I was also uh, using those presentations to try to learn all I could about what was in the area that to me would represent referral sources. Um, for how to help these kids when we were finished with assessment. And at that time, there was no Chesapeake Bay Academy. I've seen um, Hampton Roads from both sides now, and I'm here to tell you it's a lot better with CBA than it was without it. But among the resources that I often used then, there was a retired teacher who tutored dyslexic kids from her basement in Chesapeake. Her name was Dot Ripley. Yep, believe it or not, Dot Ripley. And so I was uh, alarmed when I learned that she would be retiring. But a young a fellow came to my office and told me that he was uh, going to be the head of school at a new private school for kids with learning disabilities that had um, been started by a fellow named Rosser whose daughter had been tutored by Dot Ripley. And he was um, its proprietor. So I went out to visit this little pine paneled uh, school off of uh, South Military Highway. I liked the name and the philosophy. It was the Tidewater Academy of Individualized Learning. And uh, gradually I began to make a few referrals to it nervously but because uh, it was really the only good choice for many parents and because I really wanted to see the school succeed, I did what I could to go out and give PTA presentations and this and that. There's a much better story that you should hear from CBA's founding parents about how this school uh, entered into a sudden financial collapse and a small group of people and in uh, effect, reconstructed it, uh, rescued it, um, established an independent school that was to become Chesapeake Bay Academy. And this part of the story isn't mine to tell, so I'm breezing over it. Um, but I encourage you to talk to the Rashkins, the Thrashers, uh, the Roberts, the Bengals, 
and, and get this story of high anxiety, sweat, tears, and boundless joy, which is really the CBA story. All I can say is, hey, this is CBA. Uh, it's a home to thousands of stories in which these kinds of uh, achievements have been homegrown from persistence and determination. My story is less dramatic, but it lights me up. Uh, it's sort of a backstage perspective, a young neuropsychologist desperate for better options. Uh, so I had referred some of these founding parents into the Tidewater Academy of Individu Individualized Learning. And uh, I wasn't around much for their hard first year or so. A part of that year, I was in Louisiana. I'd been called up by the Air Force during Desert um, Shield Desert Storm. And I had gone off to a medical facility in um, England Air Force Base, Louisiana. And when I got back, they asked me to join their new board of trustees. And of course, I've been with them for 30 years and have loved every minute of it. I often suspected that they were trying to get me back for the mess I'd put them in, um, but they never said that. And uh, to their credit, they've been nothing but uh, welcoming all along. And on my part, I was chomping at the bit because I really have wanted to see this program succeed from even before it was here. But uh, I'll resist the temptation to go into a lot more uh, CBA stories and just jump into 30. Uh, first, uh, I know um, many of you may wonder why would a small K to 12 school do something as aspirational as try to set up a, a research center for uh, educational research and technology innovation? Well, hey, this is CBA. Uh, in, uh, in part, this is a really natural um, outgrowth of what CBA has been doing for a very long time. We always wanted to be a beacon for best practice and now evidence-based practice. And we've been hard at not only um, becoming that beacon through the nine to 12, the nine month uh, in class work that all of our faculty do, the summer teaching, but also through things like the um, annual ADHD conference hosted with Children's Hospital, the King's Daughters, and presentations Judy gives all over town and lots of other representatives of CBA. The blogs on our website that I'd encourage you to visit. All of this has been an attempt to shine a brighter light over all of Hampton Roads about how to teach these kids and what our experiences are. So we are um, already positioned to build out something like uh, CERTI. In fact, um, the foundational infrastructure for this operation has been in place for some time. The advisory council that Judy mentioned are people who are already operating within CBA's walls with their graduate student placements in art therapy and in psychology, with their collaborations in prior research projects at CBA. And we've already established a means by which we can review projects for their ethical management of the participants inside of the research, the education committee which was renamed the Education and Research Committee only a few years ago to reflect that we were building this infrastructure. And these foundational alliances with other area universities and higher education have brought us the expertise that we need to build the advisory council. So CBA was well positioned uh, to do this. So why innovative technology? Well, first, uh, Judy's alluded to a long history that CBA has with um, technology. And 
you should know that within special education, assistive education methods, assistive technology has always been the first place that schools pick up technology and begin to use it. Uh, and that was certainly true at Chesapeake Bay Academy. When the school was built, when the building was built, which is a whole nother uh, story of the unachievable being achieved, uh, the school was built with open wiring so that the kids could understand how computers operated and how the cables came in back in the day before it was not necessary to have as many wires. Um, our earliest kids uh, in that school came the summer beforehand to build the laptops that they would be working with. And in those days, uh, kids routinely acquired Microsoft certification uh, as part of the school curriculum. Uh, and we're in fact um, technicians on graduation. The story goes on with many different educational management system platforms that we've been through with the kids each carrying laptops uh, to Chromebooks uh, with vibe boards and whiteboards and um, some of the other things that uh, Judy has mentioned. So we've always been about innovation and always looking for how best to use it. Uh, but innovation has had just an enormous acceleration through this pandemic, as we all know, and it's here to stay. Uh, why should we be doing this now? Because a crisis is a terrible thing to waste. Um, all leaders know this to be true. Innovation happens when there is a crisis and uh, problems get solved because they have to be solved. At CBA, that's been the story of the school's life. All of the big accomplishments that we've had from the birth of the school itself to um, expanding to the upper school, to constructing a building, all of these things were done because they had to be done. There really wasn't a choice, our kids needed it. And, and that's true for this. Uh, you may uh, know that the US Department of Education is getting ready to spend about $122 billion on trying to help schools rebuild after the pandemic uh, to put a particular emphasis on educational technology. But I'm here to tell you that we don't know how best to spend that money. Uh, happily, the board at Chesapeake Bay Academy doesn't have to solve the problem for the nation's entire school system, but we have to solve that problem for CBA. We have to spend our resources well, and we need to know what works for whom, under what conditions. Our fascination with uh, technology innovation is not technology for technology's sake. When all the research is in, and um, we've learned a lot more than we know now, it isn't going to be the case that we have found out that uh, virtual learning is either good or bad. Instead, what we're going to learn is what are the variables uh, and how do they work together to determine when certain aspects of technology are helpful for particular kids. CBA has always been about individualized education, and we're going to be doing the same thing with uh, innovative technology. Which kids do well with this? and which kinds of technology do some kids do well with? Under what kinds of spe specific circumstances? These are the um, sort of detailed questions that you flush out one at a time through difficult research. 
but that's in effect uh, what's going to be going on and why we're doing this now. Now, already we've formed a 30 advisory council and this council has met bi-weekly for over a year. Um, there's a lot of work that goes on inside this think tank. Uh, in part, we've uh, already completed a major grant application. We didn't win that grant, but we sure learned a lot through it, and we gelled as a group. Out of it, uh, we wrote an article, and I encourage you to go to CBA's blog and read it. Uh, it has to do with uh, CBA's history in educational technology and why we're ready for this now. Uh, we were consulting with the school through the pandemic in gathering real-time data about how the kids were doing, what parents were thinking, how the teachers were experiencing, what they were going through. We've just undergone uh, a natural experiment in that in the year 2020, 2021 particularly, uh, we were sometimes exclusively in person, sometimes exclusively virtual, and sometimes in a hybrid context. And there was an opportunity to survey throughout that period and begin to get feedback from everybody about how this was affecting the school. Uh, it may seem like this is a absolutely wrong time to jump into such a big project as CERTI and so technology focused when everyone is exhausted from what they've gone through in the pandemic. And I'm here to tell you, it's been exhausting for CBA teachers, just like it has for others across the country. But CBA teachers fared well because they were prepared ahead of time. The school's enmeshment in technology gave it a real leg up when it came time to apply this in a major way. And what we've already learned through the research that's beginning to be published around the country is that schools that did well were schools that already had a lot of digital learning experience. And our kids did, our teachers did. They're also, uh, the, the schools that did well were schools in which uh, teachers took a hands-on approach to getting kids and families on board, making sure people showed up for classes virtually and so on. And so our outcome, while there is certainly plenty of fatigue from that stress, particularly in the upper schools, that we had kids that now want more of it and families and teachers, uh, and we're in a position to have already gathered real-time data and made real-time adjustments to how school was being taught. Judy made a reference to um, our learning about which platform, Zoom or Microsoft Teams. The head of upper school conducted a survey with the kids who had had a Zoom platform in the spring of 2020 and a, uh, I'm sorry, I guess, yeah, I guess that's right. And in the fall of 2021, went to Microsoft Teams. And he was able to show a statistically significant difference in the kids' enthusiasm for the way Microsoft Teams interfaced with Canvas and the other educational management software we use. And the effect of that is to have used real-time survey data to uh, make immediate adjustments in how the school operated. And so we're as interested in these internal uses of CERTI as we are in external publications or, or research. Um, when uh, best used, virtual learning is individualized, as I mentioned before, and our task is to find out what works best for who, when, under what circumstances. Um, there are some things that our review of the literature tells us uh, about 
the pandemic response and some of them that I've already alluded to. On the whole, this massive de demand for virtual learning was disruptive and stressful. Uh, but the best experiences were those that were embedded in the experience of, of digital learning already. Uh, we're also learning already, as Judy alluded to, there were differences in who does well. And uh, generally upper school kids did better with uh, this kind of learning than lower school kids, although there are exceptions in both categories. Um, and what we're beginning to do already is pair that survey data we gathered throughout the pandemic with personal characteristics of uh, students and try to understand what were the characteristics of those students who did particularly well or did, or did more poorly uh, with virtual learning. So uh, we might look at that next slide. This is um, our first study actually, uh, it's labeled study number two for some reason, that's my mistake, but the personality characteristics of students who were attracted to online learning is really the first one. The second one are, um, will be interviews with students. Oh, I'm sorry, the first one was the student profile characteristics that we already have in the student files. A, a second study will be um, to give students a, a personality instrument that we think might predict which kids do better uh, by virtue of their um, sort of introversion, extroversion characteristics. And a third study will be interviews with students to really dive in and try to find out what do students think about all this and, and where uh, might we go with it. We'll be expanding the research infrastructure going forward. One of the things we know we need is an executive director for CERTI. Uh, we're uh, tasked within CERTI to find funding for ourselves and we will be doing that through grants and, and whatever. Uh, we already are working on a physical space, uh, but the executive director is critical because there is a lot of detail in getting each of these projects uh, through um, institutional review boards at universities and uh, getting a, a detailed research project uh, through, it takes a lot of time and energy. Uh, we'll be building alliances with national educational research centers. Uh, we'll be evaluating models for online learning and designing uh, and evaluating new technology. Um, I have to tell you that what we are already seeing around the country is that teachers and students are, are experimenting like crazy. Just as the rest of us learned, we can benefit a lot from technology. Um, and there are things that we love about it and things that aren't so pleasant. Schools are learning this too. And people are experimenting day to day with this and that. Our perspective is, sim is simply, if we're going to experiment anyway, why not experiment well? Why not affiliate with institutional review boards to be sure that we're um, managing research participants ethically and protecting the kids that are going to be a part of any research project. Why not design studies that tell us something when the data comes in so that we're not reliant on the most articulate person in the room to uh, frame a best practice theory we're actually aware of evidence-based best practice. Why not recruit experts in research to help us with the uh, statistical analyses that make data make sense? Uh, all of this is uh, a recruitment of talent, which CBA has done again and again and again. In my 30 years on the board, uh, some of the most remarkable experiences for me have been to witness um, 
a parade of Hampton Rose best people working on behalf of this school with whatever tool they best wield to uh, build this thing and to uh, apply it with uh, exceptional talent in case after case. This, is, this will be just one more example where we reach out to, to smarter people to help us uh, pull this off. Um, so these are our next plans. Uh, I think that's probably where I stop. I don't know that I have other slides and I'm certainly um, interested in giving our group uh, lots of opportunity to talk and react. If I may, I, I would like to just jump in a, uh, on a little bit of this. Um, Please. So um, when I look at those last several goals, you know, build alliances with national education research centers and evaluate, uh, evaluate models and design and evaluate new technology. Those are really lofty goals. Um, and, and again, JD, I, I connect with where you started to say, you know, how is this little K-12 school going to jump in and impact those things? But um, I, I want to put into context where we are as an organization in, in moving forward already. So the reason CBA was so well positioned to pivot at the point that we needed to was because we had been working with a learning management system um, since 2012, starting with Edmodo and, and then um, in 2017, we started engaging with Canvas. Now, to, to give you some context, I just was um, in a conversation with someone whose um, spouse worked for the, the Virginia Beach City Public Schools. They, with the money that um, JD was referencing, are now purchasing Canvas to begin to implement next year. So where we started training our teachers in how to do this almost five years ago, but there's other folks that are, are just starting this exercise. So um, as, as we both referred to, we, Um, but, but the one piece that I guess I would, I would take um, uh, an, uh, an issue with is that we tend to look at those organizations like us who are excited about um, the change that has come. Let me tell you that um, there are plenty of schools out there and plenty of educators out there who would be perfectly content to go back to everything the way that it was. It is the nature of human beings that they resist change. And, and therefore, um, you know, moving into this space in, a, in a, an intentional and, and determined way is not intuitive for all people. So, um, what I am, I'm so excited about the fact that as JD referred to, I've got a faculty who is all in, they are moving forward. Um, we have right now a young man who we're supporting through a master's program who is doing his research on gamification in the classroom. That's also a part of our work is, is working with some of our young educators. So um, we're in this moment that educators can choose to embrace or not. And, and the, the other part of this is how are the consumers of this education, our students and our families responding? So, I, I was just hearing um, from the 
executive director of the Virginia Council for Private Education, who um, is on the transition team for the new governor in the um, office of uh, the Department of Education. 45,000 students have fallen out of the public school system over the last 18 months. Now, something's, if consumers vote with their feet, <laughs> and, and that is what we're seeing in this moment. So what are the things that we as innovators can then create to better serve these students and their families? Those are the questions that we really want to answer with CERTI. And, and I don't want to... I don't want to turn this into, uh, you know, my my case for it because I don't I don't think there needs to be one. It's it's self um, it's uh, self evident as I see it. Um, yeah, I'll just add a couple things I didn't mention that um, echo some of Judy's comments. One is that um, CPA's small size. Um, gives it a flexibility that really makes it ideal for a center, even though these are aspirational and, and highly, uh, highly idealistic hopes and dreams in some ways. Uh, if you talk to any university um, professor in education in Hampton Roads and ask them how easy it is to do research, in any of the uh, public schools of the seven cities in Hampton Roads, they'll give you a quick answer. Those schools are big and bureaucratic and it is hard to introduce a research project into them. Um, at, at CBA, we've been doing this for several years already. Uh, we've had projects from the University of Pittsburgh and Stanford University and EBMS and Old Dominion, and uh, we're already in this. And when we talk about designing and evaluating new technology, it's already afoot in these ways. The Stanford University project involves an app uh, in which a parent shows a child on their iPhone a picture of another child expressing an emotion. And, and these are for autistic spectrum disordered kids. So the, the child is asked to say what emotion that is that the other child is expressing and then try to express it themselves. And the parent uses the iPhone to record that their own child's facial expression and in effect, send it back to Stanford. Uh, Stanford, accumulates all of this and is now able uh, both to diagnose and train the kids with autism spectrum disorders to better recognize and express emotions. Um, but they can, they can use the device to help determine who has autism spectrum disorder. Um, we're already in this. We're already a part of these uh, uh, designs and evaluations of new technology. And we're already evaluating models for online learning. We now know Microsoft Teams works better than Zoom for our students. Uh, so these are not uh, just impossible goals, but the idea of uh, aligning with national educational research centers just magnifies our scope and, and our access to talent. Uh, JD, um, I think you froze. Oh, I'm sorry. Is everyone frozen? I don't know what to do about it. Uh, Should I leave and come back? No. no, 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 you're back. You're fine. Okay. Well, I'm talking too much, uh, but um, so much to tell. I mean, inside CBA, the things that excite me are uh, the things like Judy's story about an eighth grade science teacher pursuing his own master's thesis with a gamification project that we're likely to do within the school. You know, th things uh, uh, like 
a faculty development survey that uh, Judy just gave to her teachers to assess their degree of comfort and knowledge about technology. With it, we we're able to identify uh, the strongest and the least comfortable and pair them up in a mentoring fashion so that we're individualizing faculty development uh, in a fashion that follows suit. So all of this um, is already at work and, and to watch the culture of the school become uh, evidence-based and to watch the um, faculty themselves get enthusiastic about this is uh, a pretty great So good afternoon, morning, everyone. I'm Barbara Ham Lee, and I am uh, going to help moderate the uh, question and answer section of our presentation this morning. We've been given lots and lots of information. It's an exciting time for CBA, for CERTI, and the work that's going to be uh, done and how it's going to inform education moving forward. So if you have a question, can you either unmute, since we're so small, you can just simply unmute yourself. Um, Tammy, if we could just bring everybody up, take the slide down for just a second so that we can all see each other. That would be great. And we can ask any questions, thank you, that you may have. Anyone have a question? Yes, Paul. Yeah, hi, good morning. Hi, good morning. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, I come at this from, from private practice, right? I'm an architect uh, here, here in Virginia Beach, um, but I'm, I'm really excited to hear what you've been embarked on here. I agree, this has been a tremendous opportunity um, and it's going to be important for us not to forfeit or squander the progress uh, that, that, that's, been, that's been achieved and, and what's been learned, especially around things like balance, uh, intentionality, uh, preference, accommodation. Um, you know, this isn't just any longer about kind of surrogacy or, or compromise or just kind of breaking even, right? I think we've, I think we've done better than that. There has been actually substantial progress, uh, particularly in, in the remote um, and, the, and the hybrid model. So um, like, like uh, Judy mentioned, plenty of people just kind of want to go back to the, pre, the preconditions. Um, and to me, um, that's, that's, that's uh, somewhere between uh, ludicrous and mean. Um, and, and so, uh, uh, you know, I, I think the, the program that you are embarking on here is really exciting this opportunity to uh, uh, backstop what would what otherwise might be the forfeiture of the progress uh, with with um, uh, further experimentation and uh, an evidence based research. So um, I, I, I very much look forward to, uh, to to seeing what comes out of out of your efforts. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Paul, um, we uh, we are working on the build out of the the space and would love to have the benefit of your expertise in that exercise so um would love to continue the conversation around that let's please do excellent well you know how to find me and so uh, um track do. track me down and, and we'll and we'll negotiate a time thank you yeah absolutely and then maybe i can uh, play in the sensory gym too while i'm there <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of fun paul <laughs> Thank you. Any, any other questions or comments? I have one question for Judy and JD. Um, as I'm listening to the presentation, I'm thinking about also how this work will inform how, how universities teach students to become teachers, because that's going to be a whole new way of, of presenting lessons and, and actually teaching in the classroom. So do you anticipate that some of your research will be able to help inform that also. Uh, JD, we'll start with you. Well, I hope so. I think it's a great question. I should defer to Linda uh, Miller Dunleavy and uh, her expertise at uh, ODU, but we're, we're already um, placing you know, students in the classrooms to help with um, that acquisition. Linda, do you have comments about that? I was trying to stay quiet because it's still morning for me. Um, <laughs> and by the way, you, your your presentation, JD, could sell sell me the, the the worst product ever because you're so good and so 
ready to listen to. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, one of my gurus growing up as a teacher. Um, so yeah, so I was a teacher preparation of, at ODU for special ed. I, I do I do think about the seed idea of what we're talking about being already implemented. You know, like the silly technology classes that we took that had no practical when we were actually went to the classroom, we teachers couldn't even figure out how to work a program because they had to go home on weekends and spend thousands of hours learning it before they could teach it. And then they had to teach it and be the facilitator. I mean, it's just was so, such a horrible, um, you know, dominant effect of never really getting implementation um, of a product or, or idea or, you know, whatever we're talking about. So yes, it would be great to have this infused into a internship or into a you know, best practice every time they went into the classroom as a practicing uh, teachers to be, you know, uh, like teacher candidate um, pair, uh, professional. So I, I'm on board. I just don't know exactly what that would look like. You know, I have a, a, a story that Judy just recently told me that I'll pass along because I think it's relevant. It's also relevant to how technology is often um, better used in a way different than it was designed to be used, much like medications are often later found to be better for something that they weren't originally intended for. But um, Judy made reference to these Kubi robots that basically sit on a desktop and, and rotate a, an iPad or something so that a child can be represented in the classroom if he's sick at home and can basically see what's happening and all that. That was their designed purpose. And uh, we're already, Judy has just discovered in the last week or so that clinicians in the area who want to make a, uh, a classroom observation of their patient are able to do that with a Kubi. Well, a Kubi can also uh, represent a means by which a student teacher can join a classroom and learn how uh, it's done. You know, a, a Kubi uh, can be used by a teaching assistant to uh, broadcast the class to those who are learning virtually uh, versus so that we're, when we're in a hybrid model with some kids at home and some kids in the classroom, the, the uh, teaching assistant in effect shares a screen and uh, broadcasts so that the teacher isn't burdened by having to produce uh, a video of live teaching while he or she teaches. I mean, these are what we're talking about when we say, you know, designing and evaluating technology. We're, we're not necessarily putting the thing together with its um, wires and whatever they, <laughs> however they're assembled. But we're putting them to new uses and evaluating those new uses all the time and on an experimental basis. And why not do that in a way that can be shared with other people? Oh, yeah. Along those along those lines too, Marcy Ball was one of the very first people out of North Carolina with Dr. Robert Gable from uh, ODU, it, probably 15, 20, 15 years ago at least, where she did the first bug in the ear. Um, and her point was to be exactly what she just described, but they also later were able to use it for um, eyes and ears in the classroom without being in the classroom for data collection and research uh, studies where you know, the data collector was you know, grad assistant who had been trained um, uh, to look for, you know, like, did, she, did the teacher give enough you know, chances for response? You know, um, was, was the same child being cho chosen too many times? Was the teacher not giving enough wait time? On and on. And I could see the Kubi also replicating even better something like this, where we have grad students from their house, you know, from CBA, uh, from their own schools, um, being research, uh, being helpful in research uh, gathering with the data collecting using Kubi. So I do see them, um, you know, innovatively being even getting better, but also being, um, you know, of the world of today where, you know, we may be working from home more than we think. But I, I do think it's interesting to go back to Barbara's point of um, colleges of education and um, their willingness or, or not to um, adopt this new um, form of, of education. And, and unfortunately, uh, at the university level, uh, it is known to be pretty slow. 
um, to, to adapt. So it's going to take a groundswell. It's going to take us pushing this up. Um, and, and, you know, you're talking about the research that's being done, um, Linda, but then that research at the university level doesn't translate into um, instructional change, right? Curriculum design change. Uh, so, so what are the things that we can do across th that board? Um, that, that is what I see as, you know, the, the future here. It's the big picture. We have on the ground uh, work to do, certainly. And, and I would love to be able to work um, hand in glove with an executive director of CERTI moving forward because the work is so important. Um, so I know it is... 10.02 and we have um, uh, used our time with you this morning and I hope you feel like it was a, a valuable use of your time. Um, for you, Paul, it has been a while since we've connected and I would certainly love to get you in here and I can show you the space um, and we can talk about the expansion. But I hope that all of you will will um, take what you learned this morning and, and go share, um, right? Have the important conversations because all of you are engaged in, in this um, enterprise in really important and meaningful ways. So I, I am so grateful for your presence here this morning, for your support of CBA always. Um, and now it's time for you all to go off. Have a wonderful day. And, and I wish you all good things this holiday season. And let me know if there's any other way that um, we can work together. Okay. Thanks so much.